Good morning. You're welcome to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. And my name is Nyamguru Agaji. It's a pleasure always knowing that you are there. Today is the 16th mm -hmm. of April. Uh, April 2024. And we thank God for keeping us alive. And so many things are looking up and we're hoping that we can tap into the goodness that is in the air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, on today's show, we'll be talking about food inflation and reaching an all-time high, regardless of um, the Naira rebound and also the fact that the grid collapsed yesterday. We'll also be taking some global stories, making headlines in our national dailies, as well as some, some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Science and technology revolutionize our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. And that is by Otho Schleislinger. He's an historian, and he says, science and technology revolutionize our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. What do you think about this one, Yungo? <laughs> well, <laughs> it goes back to what we've always been saying, that no matter how how good innovation is, how uh, technology is, it cannot replace our humanity, it cannot mm -hmm. replace our real being. And that is what comes with the memory they're talking about, mm -hmm. with uh, tradition and all that. Because mm -hmm. it's not what happens to you that matters, it's how you respond to it. Mm -hmm. And how you were raised mm -hmm. is not through technology, it's, it's, it's through tradition, it's through myth, it's through memory, it's mm -hmm. through stories that people mm -hmm. tell you, it's through how uh, the environment around you shapes you mm -hmm. and that's how you respond to a particular thing so no matter how good technology could be mm -hmm. our tradition our our being as humans is a lot better because it helps us respond uh, better or worse <laughs> <laughs> so you, I, I like the fact you just said better or worse because now um, to our viewers is what is your response today? Mm -hmm. Are you responding better to technology or are you worse off? Mm -hmm. For instance, you take your mobile phones or your tab or your laptop. That is what people are fixated on, you know, these days. Nobody's trying to make so many memories anymore. But then at the end of your yeah, life... Yeah, they take selfies. Well, yes. <laughs> I'm not saying that's bad because I yeah, do that all the time. I understand. I, I understand. love to take pictures and not just pictures of myself, you know, pictures of places that I've been to. For instance, if you are following my story over the weekend you see that i went to a very nice well i call it a resort an agricultural institute in ibado and it was so beautiful and making yeah, IITA. yes iit and making those memories it's not even just about the pictures that i've taken although i can look back on it and say oh i remember when i went here but the experience so making memories is super what important what struck you when you went there I, because i've gone there and i oh went my. there like a farmer uh, trying oh. to get some things, trying to, trying to find do out. Research, okay. Yeah, trying to find out some things, some new things that will will help agriculture back home and all that. So, oh, nice. but you didn't go. No, as far, I, so. I I went so to what, relax. What really gave, gave you the treat? You know, I went to relax, and I think for me it was just how beautiful the place was. Nature, always yes, it, it it really helped me to unplug. Um, sometimes you just need to do that. We are Lagos can be stressful. Come on, it is stressful. <laughs> it is stressful. Lagos can be stressful, and then you know, just having that time to unplug. I wasn't thinking of anything. I wasn't bothered about my phone. I was just there. You could hear the birds chirp. I had this long walk by the lake. Mm -hmm. It was just really beautiful, and I'm like, we have beautiful places in Nigeria. Why are we not doing something about tourism? You know, sometimes you think you you might have to go abroad for vacation. Tourism but this is here. was, do you understand, this was something for me. This was something that is right here in my country. And I was still able to have that feeling. When I came back, I was, my mojo was there. You, you were refreshed. <laughs> yeah. That, that, yeah so Lagos, I, Lagos can really be stressful. A, a friend of mine visited from Calabar and mm. um, uh, is going back today. The flight is this morning. Mm. And... 
when he called me <laughs> around 6 30 like, i'm on my way to the airport i said okay i am at work already he said, what, what? <laughs> how right. can that happen when did you leave home and all that in lagos you time yourself you have to leave at five you have to leave mm -hmm, at four mm -hmm. in some cases and all that yeah. and then we're getting used to it but if you come from outside or when you're talking to someone who is staying Seems outside out Lagos, place. you will know there really is stress in yeah, Lagos. Yeah, there but is. Even if we are used to it, but our bodies mm -hmm. will tell us, you know, sometimes yeah. in the future. Yeah. But anyways, you know, bring circling it back to technology. I mean, um, making memories is important. You can't just sit on your phone and say, you know what, AI would do everything for me. AI, send a text to my mom. Tell her I love her. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, you can actually call your mom or, you know, be with your mom and physically tell your mom that you love her so technology is great it will revolutionize our lives come on you can see the vehicles that we have the airplanes you know people are going to space now there's a lot that technology is doing for us so it is definitely Yet we are living oh. shorter life <laughs> it is <true>. definitely <laughs> going to revolutionize our lives and that is true because of the um, emissions and you yeah. know living in the urban cities yeah. right you know it kind of like takes a toll on your bodies but can we say that technology would really revolutionize our lives? I can only imagine what the next 100 years would look like with technology. That's going to be insane. There's a possibility there will be no technology in that time. Well, we because never know. I, I have this belief that, uh, okay, not just a belief, but there was a time when books were burned because uh, people in that time felt too much learning has eroded the fabrics of humanity and all that and mm -hmm. they were burning books and that's even a movie like it was that was almost a crime mm -hmm. to ha own a book and be too widely read mm. you know, there might come a time when our own technology that is supposed to enhance our lives will will make us turn against each other and almost get ourselves extinct from mm. this world so there could be a possibility there would be right. no no kind of Hopefully. technology we're thinking about mm. because at this point it's almost as if we've had almost everything so what mm. will they be creating at that time that's why i said it? i don't that's why i said i don't know what it will be like i just hope we don't you know go into extinction you know if we have like so many nuclear weapons because technology the is biggest what guns are them. made for humans the small, Tim, yeah. small guns are for animals mm -hmm. but the biggest ones are Even made for humans we're talking about that. guns let's talk about the nuclear weapons i mean i was watching a documentary that talked about how there would be a winter a cold winter if all of the nuclear weapons were to be deployed so literally human beings might just go and even if you survive and there's you this might fear that there might be a third, third world, world war, war right as well. now because yeah. iran is spoiling for a fight in mm -hmm. fact they've started israel mm -hmm. is responding america is supporting to mm -hmm. before you know you it, have the russia, russia, Ukraine, russia might join in china, china. and all that mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. we know it we are in a world war i hope that doesn't happen please but, i love my life so but much. the other thing is that um I'm glad that in most cases, when they talk about world, it's only the Western world. Mm, they uh, forget about the, Africa. The so oldest I've... man in the world is somewhere there in the West. They don't know some of our Africans are older than that. Mm -hmm. they, this, this in the world is them. They mm -hmm. think the world remains there. So let that world world war <laughs> let it be, let it be <laughs> because of that there is no world war um, and our people all. should be planning for that even though it's we are not praying for it we should mm. be planning for that we know what happened to nigeria when russia started the war uh the oil the bread mm -hmm, the meat and mm -hmm, everything mm -hmm. so there might come a time when even if there's no world war three there might come a time where there's scarcity ourselves. of everything that we depend outside yeah, to get. Yeah, we should be able to produce for ourselves, really. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Well, yeah. we just hope that we can stop being an exporting, uh, an importing nation mm -hmm. and become an exporting nation. Anyway, so our course of the day is just talking about technology, um, revolutionizing our lives. But, you know, the traditions, the myth, the memories that we make just frame our response to that. And so um, how do you respond to technology today? Make sure that you are unplugging taking yourself out of your phone or out of technology sometimes. Try to spend time with your family, your friends, the people that you care about. Okay, moving over to our top trending stories this morning. This one says, Sustainable paying fuel subsidy more than before, and that is being said by El Rufai. The former governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasir El Rufai, has claimed that the president, Bola Tinubu led federal government is currently subsidizing fuel for Nigerians. 
fielding questions from journalists in Meduguri, the Borneo state capital, on Monday, El Rufai said the federal government is now fielding questions from journalists. Well, El Rufai said that the federal government is now paying fuel subsidy more than ever before. The president declared during his inauguration on May 29, 2023, that the country can no longer subsidize fuel for the citizens, saying the petrol subsidy is gone. The developments skyrocketed the price of fuel and other products and services, triggering the economic hardship that has been bedeviling the nation since 2023. But the former governor told journalists on Monday that the subsidy is back. According to him, the federal government returned the subsidy because the impact has been seen and the packages of support that would reduce the impact have not been so effective in reducing the impact. So the federal government is back now subsidizing petrol. Well, I agree because, I mean, if you're looking at, you know, the prices of fuel and how the dollar was able to go up to 1,900, but then fuel, well, with NNPC was still being sold for 568 naira or so, then I'm wondering how come the dollar doesn't, you know, reflect on fuel as well? So I'm sure there's a quasi subsidy on that. What do you think, Yemgo? <laughs> <laughs> You've been blushing this I'm, morning. I'm allowed to laugh. <laughs> just, let me just laugh. But my question always is, if subsidy is being paid with our money, why is it such a secret? Why not just tell us that, okay, we're humble enough to know that a subsidy removal is not working, so we're returning it. And then let us see it reflected, because when subsidy was being paid to the tune that is smaller than it is being paid now, mm. the fuel was less than 200 naira. Mm -hmm. So tell us subsidy is being paid and let it reflect on, our, on the fuel price and everything will, is bound to come down. So why are you hiding it and paying fuel subsidy? Who are you paying it to? And when There's you're paying the so-called cabals, yes, that's yes. you know. So if you're paying this, for, who are you paying it to? Why are we not seeing that uh, reflected in our fuel um, fuel price? And secondly, since the said the removal of fuel sus subsidy has begun, the the FAC, the federal allocation mm -hmm. that they share to Amazing. states, went up. It hasn't come down. So if they're paying even more, where are they getting the money to pay this uh, federal allocation to states that will amount to their tune that they're giving to them? Mm. So where's the money coming from? There's something that's not connecting, and I don't understand. There's no transparency. I don't understand. What it is. There's no transparency. Tell us fuel subsidies back. We won't eat you. We won't kill you. After a while, you removed it, we didn't die. Mm -hmm. Now that you're paying it, you're doing it for our benefit. Tell us that this is yeah. the, the challenge we're facing, and this is what we're doing. And then let it reflect. So talking about reflecting in, you know, the fuel prices, I don't think it will come down in the sense that if dollar could go up, because as of when subsidy was gone, how much was the dollar, right? Mm -hmm. So if dollar could go up as much as 1,900, that means they're paying a huge chunk for the subsidy. So I'm not sure they would now, you know, take out everything and say, come and pay 100 and something naira again, the way it was last year. When they removed fuel subsidy, they discovered, according to them, mm. the, num the actual number of uh, uh, liters we use in Nigeria, that the amount they were giving was, was outrageous. Mm -hmm. So now that you have discovered that amount, let's say they were saying a thousand uh, or w one million liters, for mm. instance, and now you discover that we needed only 900,000 liters of, of fuel in Nigeria. You know the amount, mm. which means you should spend less, mm. no matter how how big the dollar has become or how how high it was. Now the dollar has come down anyway. To mm -hmm. in some places they say less than a thousand naira, which is good. Which but I, I still cannot clap for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but so there's just no connect. There's just no connect. Let us know why why you're paying the subsidy, how you're paying the subsidy, who you're, you're paying, paying the, the subsidy, subsidy to. to and where you're getting the money to pay the subsidy mm. and then still pay the federal allocation like so we don't know what is happening yeah like i said there's no transparency and that is what we just need from the federal government be transparent with all of your dealings it says i don't think it's Isn't that, that difficult <laughs> it's not, not rocket that. science just be transparent and because right now look at the list of questions you've you know posed we have so many questions as nigerians we need to know these things so if you are transparent we don't even have to ask you all these questions i don't even think anyone needs to come out and say 
Where is the subsidy money coming from? Where is this? It should be there already. They need you should have information. To take them to court first. They Why? Yes, yeah. supposed to take them to court, and before you can say something. Why? Be transparent. The mm -hmm. people will help you govern. Mm -hmm. That's as simple as that. Mm -hmm. So, if you are a boss, I was just about to say that. You're, 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 you're in my head. <laughs> yes, you're, you're transparent enough. You know. People you, will, will work for you, you dedicatedly. Mm -hmm. And if you're transparent, this is what I do as the boss. This is what I do. This is there what are we so many are. times that you can leave your post and you know that the person next to you can we'll just handle, feel, it well. handle that thing. So you rest more. Mm -hmm. But everything is just, you are doing it, Baba Lalo, You don't want people to are know. You, are you doing some incantations? <laughs> With Nigerians, you know what I mean? It's terrible. Okay, the next story is uh, Woko secures release of suspects skilled in drone AK-47 modifications. That's our next top trending. Uh, Senator Ned Woko, representing Delta North Senatorial District, Delta State, has secured the release of four family members the army arrested for fabricating weapons at Onisha uh, Olona community in the state. The major suspect reportedly has the ability to build drones and modify AK-47 rifles designed to hold 30 rounds to 60 rounds, which attracted Senator Nwoko. His desire was for the nation to provide support and develop the skill of such a talented persons, and he plans moving a bill for a law to recognize and build such talents nationwide. That is fantastic. We said that thing here. We. We're not supporting crime. Yes. We're not supporting crime. But when you find some people doing things like that, let their, let their jail time mm. be producing this thing or doing what they know how to do mm -hmm. for the benefit of the nation. If you look at the United States of America, for instance, you know, the people who go there, maybe go to jail, and they're, they, they're very good with technology or something, maybe they are like hackers, hackers yeah. hey, maybe that was how they, they arrested them. They were hacking, um, you know, accounts or something. They use them, they use those skills for their own benefits. And that's what we should be doing in Nigeria. Fine, obviously we're never going to support crime. You shouldn't even go out and be doing anything that's illegal. But for the people that are there, they probably have one thing that you're skilled in or another so why can't you use that you know for the benefits of nigeria now you know if this person can create all of these things we're not saying he's going to create it to give it to you know thieves or mm -hmm. kidnappers or armed robbers but even for the the police departments for the army so we can start to produce us and even sell to other parts of the world so it also tells us that um, sometimes the opportunity for people to flourish may not be there true the people who recognize his talents are the misgrants, the, the hoodlums mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. So why can't we have uh, platforms that people like this can explore and, and, and put their talents to use? If you watch Catch Me If You Can, for instance, mm. yeah, it's a movie, I know that, but these are things that happen. happen. Catch Me If You Can, he was a forger. He could yeah. forge anything and he could recognize mm -hmm. something that is being forged. Mm -hmm. And he started to work with, with the FBI and yeah. that's how they were able to catch a lot of criminals and all True. that. So Sometimes you turn something that is supposed to be a bad thing to For your good. advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what the government should be doing. Not exactly. to go and catch a, a ship that has, has siphoned our oil and then you burn it. You just uh, burn it on the high sea. It. You just, just burn it on the high sea. No, no ex evidence. You go to Slim Tire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to our final top trending story. This one talks about Sylvester Oromoni. Um, Fallen of false judgment says Corona ignored evidence. Human rights lawyer Femi Falano has faulted the recent ruling by Corona inquest sitting in Ogba Magistrate Court examining the death of a 12-year-old student of Darwin College, Lekki Sylvester Jr. Oromoni. Falano said the Corona disregarded further toxicological examination and withdrew initial recommendations for criminal negligence charges despite glaring evidence and allegations of bullying within the school, including the discovery of a mysterious substance in Sylvester's stomach. Earlier, the corona magistrate, um, Mukau Kadiri, said Oromoni died as a result of failed treatment for his enlarged liver due to his parents' and doctors' negligence. The deceased's death was an avoidable one, but for the negligence of the parents and PW3, they didn't take him to the hospital until the day he died on November 30, 2021. Reacting to the judgment in a statement on Monday, Fallon said the coroner ignored the evidence of the government pathologist 
that the black substance found in the stomach was well of the disease was not subjected to toxicological examination the allegation was that the deceased was forced to drink a poisonous substance in an attempt to exonerate the one college the coroner was silent on the overwhelming evidence of the bullying of the deceased his sister and other students by the same set of students in particular, the coroner dis, um, discountenanced the evidence of a student who had testified that he saw the deceased beaten up and subjected to torture by a group of senior students. In spite of the uncontradicted evidence, the coroner said that the deceased died of natural cause. The coroner claimed that the negligence of the family doctor led to the death of the deceased, but failed to refer him to a medical and dental council of Nigeria for appropriate sanctions, said Falano. This is quite a touching, it's, touching it's, it's story. It's very sad. It's mm -hmm. very sad. A lot of Nigerians don't believe this uh, story yeah. of the corona and all that. And uh, they're saying, so if, if I have an ailment that has not been treated, and then I come to your school, and then you, you subject me to bullying, and I die of that, you'll say, because I didn't go to the mm -hmm. hospital. Mm -hmm. You don't know how I was managing it until I got to that place. Mm -hmm. You give me a substance that I take that will trigger it, mm -hmm. and then I die. You say it's from home mm -hmm. and all that. Yes. It, an ailment could come from home, but, but, probably have but, management but what about the management that they've been doing mm -hmm. uh, with this and all that? And then you ignore all that and you say, uh, these people are exonerated. So the bullying can continue. And now you, you they, blame. Everything can continue. You are blaming the parents. You're blaming the parents. Do you know the torture that the parents have had to face knowing that their son is dead? from something that they believed was bullying and now you come back and you say oh it's your fault mm. you did not treat your you did mm. not take care of your child that is just it's just ballistic the to father, me. The father in has fact, rejected I was, it anyway. yes i was reading a lot of comments on social media about this story and one comment in particular that was you know just there was people were saying for a child that is in boarding how do you uh, you are in boarding school at least your teachers are supposed to be there taking care of you. You have matrons. It's you cool have like that. Yes. You have an infirmary. You have, like all of, you have, have a, a dispensary. You have a, you have a nurse. You have all of these things. I sent my child to your school. You're supposed to take care of that child. Because as at that point, the child is under your custody. So this you child, can't neglect child, the child and come back and tell me that I am me. the cause. This child comes to me one month. And then he goes to your place for three, three months. months. So... He's more with you mm -hmm. uh, than with if, me. If, if you have, if you have uh, a nurse or something in, in the school, they should discover that this child is either not fit to be in school mm -hmm. or he can be treated and you do some recommendation. Mm -hmm. But you keep quiet. So I'm, I'm, wondering, I'm wondering whatever the school had done before his death. Because that means... In your own part. Absolutely nothing. Yes, it's because you were negligent as well. You did not notice anything. There was not... Did you no, call the parents? let's come and pay your school fees. That's let's all. Let's collect your money and that's it. And that is so wrong. Um, I don't believe what you know, the corona has said. If that's the evidence, okay, that's fine. But will I say I believe that? No. Just like Femi Fallon are coming to, to reject it. A lot of Nigerians have said, you know what? There's something about this story that is not, is not adding up. And then, they, and then they took five hours to, to give the judgment and, and say the findings were... Five hours, what were they saying? <laughs> that they skipped the most important parts mm. that people were talking about. You skipped it and then you used five hours to blame the parents. It's of, just quite unfortunate that... that Three years later, you know, a judgment is coming and it's a judgment, you know, like this one because it's okay. Yeah. Almost three years, about um, two years and a few months. Mm -hmm. And it's quite, it's quite sad. And I mean, people are just saying, what happens to our justice system in Nigeria? What happens? Well, uh, let's see how, how it goes. Let's but, see how the story um, develops. Uh, Sylvester cannot come back. We mm -hmm. hope that even if he doesn't have, uh, the parents don't have justice for him here, that he might have, um, rest in the bosom of the lord amen and that's we, what we we'll pray yeah and we pray for um strength to the parents because i can only imagine what you know what they're feeling like right now you know hearing this judgment and you know all of the things that have happened anyways we'll go on a short break we'll look at the weather and when we return we'll be reviewing the papers please stay with us